Hey everyone, Jamie here from technicalcafe.com. Welcome to your 30th HTML tutorial. In the last couple tutorials, we actually began creating a multi-page website uh, in HTML, which is the basis for HTML project 2. Um, and in this tutorial, we're, we're not going to be using any CSS like we did in the previous project uh, for the profile pages. This is going to be pure HTML. Uh, we're going to learn how to create websites that uh, have multiple pages and stuff like that. So if you haven't seen the first couple videos, I suggest you go check those out. Um, you'll get to see what the finished product should look like, uh, as well as what we've done up till here. Uh, but if you're just turn, uh, tuning into these videos here, I'll just give you a quick overview. Uh, we've created a home page. Uh, we have an about page with some information here. Um, and we're about to start working on our news page. Uh, and additionally, we also created this menu here, um, which has a bold uh, text on each web, uh, web page that you click on here, um, just so you know not that you can't click that, and as well as what page you're on. Um, so let's actually get to work here on our news page, um, which is where we left off in the last tutorial. We had just finished the about page. Um, so the news page is going to be pretty simple, uh, probably one of the most simple pages on here, uh, along with home. We're just going to add a header and some text. Um, so let's just go ahead and do that. If we click over here to news, uh, we'll create a center t set of center tags here. And we'll say H2, uh, just so users know where we are. And we'll say uh, news. So if we save this, come over here and refresh, you'll notice that here's our news um, header here that we have. And I'm going to show you actually two ways that you can go about setting up your news page. Um, so you might want to be able to set it up saying something uh, some text here with the paragraph tags and say this is where you can find updates or news related to oops, spelled related wrong to our website. So we can do this and if we refresh uh, we'll center that. Uh, you can just do a basic news page where you can just type news and stuff like that uh, or you can make it look more like a blog if you want to. Um, you can leave this news header in, and what you can do is you can actually, within the center tag here, uh, add a header 3, which is a little bit smaller than the header up here, and we'll just say uh, topic, so we'll save that, um, we'll just refresh over here, or copy this and paste this here, and now we'll refresh, and it looks like more like a blog type thing here, um, where you have some topics, then you can write about them, um, just update the page uh, each time you want to add something new. Uh, so that's more like a blog type thing. Um, so this is basically two ways that you can go about creating it. It's up to you. Um, it's just adding basic text to a web page, so uh, it shouldn't be too difficult. Um, but I just thought it would be interesting to show you how to do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually add the paragraph way, just to keep things simple and save some time. Uh, so we'll add in our paragraph tags again, and we'll just say this is where you can find news and updates related to our website. So if we save here, come over and refresh. Uh, you'll see it looks nice, it's pretty clean, um, albeit basic, but uh, it's just a news page. Um, and you can't really have it like a traditional blog unless you start using PHP to load things from a database. Um, but just for displaying news in a static context, uh, this, is, this is fine. So let's go on to working on our contact page now, uh, which is probably going to be one of the more complicated web pages just because you have to start using forms. But it shouldn't be too bad, and we've worked with forms before in our previous tutorials, so um, let's just get into it. So if we come over here and click on contact, um, what we're going to do is we're going to add a center tags, set of center tags here, and we're going to say uh, h2, just so users know where we are. Uh, we hit, we say contact there, and we'll refresh, and here's our contact header. So uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to actually add a line of text underneath, uh, saying something like, uh, please feel free to contact us or something like that, whatever you want to add. Um, so we'll say, please feel free to contact us using one of the methods below. Thank you. Okay, so if we save this, let's actually throw in some paragraph tags here. Okay, so if we save this, we'll have some text here saying that, you know, please feel free to contact us. And what we're going to do is add a couple contact methods, uh, including the form, which we'll do last. So the two contact methods we're going to add is a phone number uh, and a street address, or snail mail, if you will. So let's come over here, and we'll space that down, actually. What we can do is we can just bump that center tag down so we don't have to enter some more. Um, and what we'll do here is we'll say uh, paragraph, and we'll close off the paragraph, 
and we'll make a bold tag so we have like a sort of header for what we're going to be entering in here. Uh, and we'll say phone, we'll say just phone. And then under, or if we'll save this first, come over and take a look. Uh, you'll see that we have phone and it's in bold. And then what we're going to do is just come outside of the bold tag here uh, and we'll add our fake phone number here. So 555, 555, 555. Okay, so if we come over here and refresh, you'll see that uh, we have our phone number here, uh, which is all well and good. And okay, that's not bold, so we'll come over here and we'll do the same thing again. Uh, so we'll create a closing paragraph tag and we'll create another set of bold tags and we'll say uh, snail mail. And then we'll come over here and enter in an address. So we'll say 1234 uh, street here. So if we come over here and refresh, uh, you'll notice that we have our phone number and our snail mail. Um, you can put them both within the same paragraph tag if you'd like. If you want to eliminate the space, uh, you can omit the paragraph tag. Um, but it just looks nice and clean like this where you have uh, both things here nice and centered uh, and a decent amount of space so you don't confuse anything or anything like that. So now that we have that, let's go in, uh, let's go about creating a form. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to actually uh, use some form tags. So we'll say form and then we'll close the form and we're going to we'll put over here we'll say form uh, process, uh, method equals and we'll say uh, post since we're going to be sending uh, a decent decent amount of information um, so you don't want that all coming through in the URL here which would get with a get function um, so we'll say uh, post and we'll say action equals in the action uh, attribute of the form element, if you remember, uh, is what page it's going to be sent to. Um, you can omit this if you're going to send it to the same page. Uh, you can enter in the same page, or you can uh, use a different page, like a process.php or something like that. Um, for, so for this uh, purposes of this, we'll just say process.php. Uh, so when the user clicks send within the form, it'll take them to a process.php page where the information can be uh, taken over and then uh, used to, or edited in whatever way you want. So uh, we're not going to go about creating this process.php page because I don't have a uh, server or anything or XAMPP or something like that that we can use. Um, but we'll just put it there as a placeholder uh, and it's also so you know what you can uh, do with this. So now that we have our form, uh, let's indent and actually let's just indent uh, the rest of this. After everything after body will indent just to keep everything clean. So we'll indent all this. Okay, we'll indent that. Uh, we will indent all of this. And within our form, we'll also indent here. So um, just so everything looks clean, we have our two center tags here, and we'll actually bump a space there too. So, okay, now that everything looks a little bit cleaner, it's a little bit easier to read, uh, especially since we're going to be adding uh, a couple more lines of code. Um, we don't want anything to be confusing. So the first thing we're going to add is a t um, text box. So we'll say input type equals, and then we're going to say we'll say text. So let's actually go ahead and save this, and come over here and refresh. And here we have a basic text box. We can enter our text. Um, but if we click enter, uh, you'll notice that it takes us to process.php, and that doesn't work. Um, so let's not do that right now. Okay, so here's our text box. What we're going to want to do is we're going to want to put uh, some type of field, like maybe name or email address, uh, outside of here. So what we'll do is we'll come back to our code, uh, and outside of here we'll just say uh, name and put a space, uh, and we'll come over here and refresh. So there we have our name field, so the user can enter in their name. Um, and the next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to create another input, and we'll say email, and we'll say input type equals text. And we'll save this, come over here and refresh. And now we have two uh, fields, but what I want to do is I want to actually put some space in between these. Um, so we're going to use a set of paragraph tags. So we'll save this, come over here and refresh. And now we have our two fields uh, decently spaced from one another uh, where we can enter in our name. So we'll say Jamie and our email and we'll say uh, Jamie at Technical Cafe. Com. So now that we have these two fields here, uh, we can go about creating our actual text box where we're going to be sending the, uh, where the user can write the body of the message. So uh, what we're going to do for this is we're actually going to be using a text area and not a text box. So we'll say 
uh, text area and we'll close our text area. If you remember that uh, a text area has uh, two tags, a set of opening and closing tags, and uh, whatever goes in here uh, is what's just going to is what will be in the actual text box. So, for example, in here, uh, we save that, and we'll get a text box that says "in here." Uh, so, what we're going to want to do is actually bump this down with a set of paragraph tags, save, and we'll come over here and refresh. And here's our text box. So, one thing I want to put over there um, is we're going to say "message," and then we'll uh, use another set of paragraph tags just to keep everything nice and spaced. Okay, so here's where the user can enter their message. Uh, it's underneath and it's on top of the text box rather than on the side since we're going to actually uh, change the amount of rows and columns making this bigger. So let's come over here and we'll say text area. We'll say rows equals and calls equals. Um, so rows is what we're going to be having going horizontally. So it's the size uh, essentially the size how many rows we're going to have and columns is how wide it's going to be. So uh, for rows we'll say let's say 200 and we'll see for columns we'll say 300. So let's see what that looks like. If we come over here and refresh uh, we'll notice that's a quite a large text box. Um, so let's say 20 by 30 and still kind of big so what we're going to do uh, for columns is we're going to say let's say 20 by 20 okay we'll change this here uh, for the number of rows we'll say 10 and for the number of columns we'll say 30 now it's essentially a matter of uh, trial and error so this looks kinda nice I just want to make it a little bit longer so we can uh, accommodate full sentences uh, so we'll say columns we'll say maybe 40 and if we refresh Okay, there we go. This looks pretty nice. It's a nice small text box, but enough to have full sentences. Uh, so if we can type, this is a message to be sent to to the owner of this website. So it looks pretty nice. You can uh, actually make it bigger or smaller depending on your tastes. And uh, some browsers actually allow you to uh, just drag it out and make it whatever size you want. So uh, that's completely up to you, whatever you want your website to be about. Um, let's just get rid of this real quick. So we'll save this, come over and refresh. Um, we'll just get rid of this. Okay, so this is what the website looks like without any text in there. Um, so the next thing we're going to want to do is actually include a submit button. Uh, so when we actually want to send this form to whoever's going to read it, um, we can go ahead and do so. Um, so let, let's come down here. And we're going to say within our form, uh, we'll say, let's just indent into there, uh, input type equals submit and we're going to give this a uh, value of send uh, and if you remember value is what's going to be on the face of the button uh, so we'll save this come over here and we'll refresh and here's our send button um, so when we click send it's actually going to send all of this information uh, to our process.php page so let's come down here and just indent the button down using up some paragraph tags so we'll save this come over here and take a look and here's our send button down here at the end of our form. So one thing that we're going to want to do um, in order, and this will, you'll learn more about this if you're going to be using some PHP uh, to insert things into a database or to process information from forms, um, is that we want to actually add names to these so that we can recognize them when we pick them up in either a post or a get variable. So uh, where it says input type equals text, we're going to give it a name, and we're going to call this uh, name. And the name is what's going to be being sent, so when you're using uh, PHP and you pick this up, uh, you're going to pick up the name field and this is going to be uh, whatever the name is. So um, we're going to be, we called this name and its name field is name, so don't let those two things confuse you. Uh, or we can call this users underscore name. Um, so for email, we're going to say name equals, and we'll say email. Uh, so And for text area, we don't need to really put in anything, but we can type in name equals. Actually for text area you should put in something. Um, if it's not part of the form you don't need to, but uh, seeing as it is a part of the form we'll be sending it, we'll give the text area a name of body for body of the message. Uh, excuse me for that one there. Um, in the send button we'll give this a name, uh, though it's not necessary. Um, but you can use the send button if you want to check to see if the form has been submitted uh, to prevent people from using certain sections of websites and stuff like that. So we'll say name equals submit. So if we save this, come over here and refresh, you notice nothing's changed. 
Um, but now we can use our form. So Jamie, email Jamie at technicalcafe.com in our message can go here. So we give we give all these a name. So whatever we send, this is going to be the name, the email, and the body are here respectively. And when we click send, all of this will be brought via a post variable to our process.php page where we can do whatever we want, use it to send an email, uh, something like that. So let's just recap what we did over here. Uh, we created our form sections, so our name section, email, and message. Uh, for the message, we didn't use a text box, but rather a text area since we can better customize it and stuff like that. Um, we gave the the name input type or the name text box a uh, name of user's name. So we're going to pick all these name variables or name uh, attributes up in PHP later. Um, so we called this one email, and for the text area, we gave it the name of body since this is where we're going to be doing uh, most of the processing of the text or most of the text writing in the body since it's the message. And we give our submit button the name of submit just for checking certain things. So this is basically uh, how we go about creating our contact page. Um, so if we save this, come over here, and we come back, we refresh. This is our contact page here. Um, we might want to add some text down here saying uh, you can send us a message. So we'll come over here and do just that. Uh, so we'll come over, OK. Alternatively, you can send us a message. So if we save this and refresh, uh, you'll see that we might want to add a little bit of a space. So we'll come down here and throw in another set of paragraph tags. OK, let's try again. Interesting, so it's not adding space for some reason. Um, we'll just use a BR. OK, there we go. So now we have some space. Um, might be a little bit too much space. We'll just get rid of one of those. And there we go. So now uh, this is basically our website. We have our home, about, news, and contact pages. So thank you for watching. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please feel free to um, post them in the comments below. Uh, or also send me an email using the technicalcafe.com contact form. And you can also send me a message on YouTube, too, if you have any questions uh, that you want me to elaborate on a little bit more, um, or just questions in general. So a quick recap of what we did. We created our home uh, page here, our about page with information about it, our news page, and I showed you how we can customize it to look like a blog or something else like that, as well as our contact page, uh, where we created the form that users can send messages with. So uh, that's basically... Uh, how are we going to go out doing it? This is a multi-page website, and this is the last video in HTML Project 2. Um, so please feel free to let me know if you have any suggestions for other HTML tutorials or anything like that. And thank you for watching.